Alright, so we've got our little connection script in here, and now we're going to go ahead and create our database. This might have been a little bit backwards way to do it, but um, I wanted to show you how to write this out. So now let's go ahead and create it. So we're going to go to our browser, and we're going to use the PHP My Admin tool, which if you remember from our previous video, we uh, just need to go to localhost then slash php my admin now there are other tools out there for working with mysql we're going to use this this is probably the most common or standard uh, it comes with pretty much any hosting package you buy uh, it comes with xamp and uh, it's a pretty good tool so let's go ahead and click on the databases tab now you'll see all these databases here. These are the ones that are already kind of built into MySQL. Just ignore these. We want to create our own. And let's call this Atom CMS. And we'll do create. And now you see it over here on the left. So we can click on Atom CMS. And here's our database. Now it's empty. We don't have any tables or data in here. And that's fine. But what we also don't have is any uh, user setup for this. So let's click on privileges. And right now the generic root user has access, but we want to create a new user. And let's just go ahead and call this user dev or development. And for host, just leave that as any host. For password, go ahead and put a password in. Now, I'm just going to make a very generic password. Which is the password1. Now, I recommend uh, being a little creative with your password. Um, especially if you're on a remote server. Uh, if you're working on your local machine and you don't really have it, available to the outside world then uh, it's not a huge deal but still a good practice and then uh, down here for database for the user we'll go ahead and do grant all privileges to database Adam CMS and come down here and check all um, down the road if you're creating users you might want to pay a little more attention to what you're allowing them to access but uh, in this instance we're fine so we want to click on go and our user was created now let's hop back over to Aptana and let's fill in the blanks here so our host is gonna stay at localhost our username however is gonna be dev or whatever you called yourself and for password the password one is the password I chose pretty creative and the database name is Adam CMS or whatever you called yours and let's go ahead and save that and as long as everything was put in correctly if you refresh the page you shouldn't see any errors but uh, let's just hop over to Aptana again and let's go ahead and put something in here incorrect like let's change the password to the password to save that refresh our page and there we get an error so that's telling you that uh, something happened with your connection so it could be your passwords wrong the username is wrong etc so let's put that back save refresh and our error goes away so let's add something else here and this is going to be uh, we're going to give it some instructions for what to do if the connection isn't correct and we're going to say after the uh, parentheses here or and uh, my personal favorite function die um, and we're gonna put in a little message here error colon so that's gonna print out error and then we're gonna actually tell it to print out the actual error so mysqli 
underscore underscore error there you go now I'm actually gonna bring this page back over here and close these so we can get a full screen view here um, one thing Aptana doesn't have out of the box and probably the only thing that I miss from Dreamweaver is a, a good word wrapping so uh, your lines are line wrapping it doesn't uh, bump down to the next line uh, there are some plugins for that but uh, I've gotten used to it. But uh, so now, if there is a problem, it's going to spit out the error. Um, and let's go ahead and change this message here. Right, we'll just call this say could not connect because. That's a little more descriptive. So we'll save that and pop back over to our page, refresh, and nothing because everything's correct. So let's go over here and change our password again so that's incorrect. Save that. Hop over here and refresh. And uh, I realize I forgot something. Um, this MySQL underscore connect error is actually a function. So we need to put our set of parentheses here. And we save that. And if we go over here and refresh, there we go. So we've got this uh, message that we've already seen. But then underneath here, we get a little more descriptive. It, uh, here's our little string we put in here could not connect because and then here's the error access is denied for the user dev and uh, generally if if it's showing the username is correct if that if you know that's the correct username then uh, odds are it's the password that's wrong now the other thing that happened here which is great is because of that die function we pretty much killed the page whereas before we were seeing the page load underneath this. But in this case, we're saying if we can't connect to the database, we don't want to show anything. And uh, that's good for many reasons. I mean, sometimes you might not want that to happen. But um, if, if there's something wrong here with the database connection on a dynamic site, then odds are we're not going to be pulling data correctly throughout the page. So there's going to be errors all over the place or missing content. And it's just going to be a big mess. So this kind of alleviates that. So now we have a database and we have a connection. Now for those who aren't familiar with databases and or how they or why we're using them in a dynamic website, the reason is we store data like uh, page content, things like that in the database and then we retrieve it. So for instance uh, with uh, Facebook, your Facebook page, there isn't a page out there called Alan Quant or Joe Blow user, you know. Um, even though you actually have a URL, you know, facebook.com slash Alan, you know, whatever, um, that page doesn't really exist. There's no static page with all your info on it. What there is is a page, probably called Profile or something like that, it would just be generic and on that page are a bunch of instructions and those instructions are telling the page to load certain data from the database based on whatever information uh, you gave it so that slash Alan is actually telling that page that Alan is the username go to the database and find all the information about Alan grab that data and then we give it a bunch of instructions to insert that data so you know, put your profile picture here. Grab the bio for Alan and put it over on the right. Um, you know, and so on and so forth. And you know, so that's a that's a kind of generic example of why a database is used. And so in our case, a database is going to hold um, the content for our pages. Um, you know, if we want to create like a blog. It's going to create, uh, we're going to have a table to hold all of the entries for the blog. Photo gallery, it's going to store the information for all the images, things like that. So if you're coming in from the last series, then you already know all this. But if you're new to this, that's a little example of what the database is for. So a quick peek over here back at uh, PHP My Admin. Click back over here on Atom CMS or whatever you called your database. And 
this is where we're going to create the uh, content for a database. And with a database, again, if you're not familiar with a database itself, a database is just a way to store data. And we store that data into tables. And if you need to know a little bit more about that, we have videos on our YouTube channel about MySQL databases and web databases in general. So what we're going to need to do is create some tables in here to hold our page information and so on. So we'll be doing that soon.